Hi, my name's Jovan and welcome to my studio. Today, you'll be learning how to use the new content browser slash asset library in Blender 3.0. If you've used Cinema 4D or Unreal Engine, you'll be very used to this and hopefully just as excited as I am that this feature is finally available in Blender. Unlike with Unreal Engine, I found it a bit confusing to actually set this up, so I hope you enjoy this video and find something useful out of it. So, what you need to do is have the latest version of Blender installed, so anything from Blender 3.0 and onwards. Then, set up your scene with all its assets and materials that you want in it. Now, save this Blender file into a folder on your computer. I made it under a subfolder called Asset Browser, just in my documents. In this Blender file, with all your assets and materials in it, create a new window by going to the bottom left corner and getting the little crosshatch and dragging it up, and then change this from the viewport to the Asset Browser by clicking the top left icon and changing it to Asset Browser. There are two main ways to send things to an asset library. The first and easiest is to use the Outliner. So just go to the top right corner of your screen, to the Outliner, right click on the asset and select Mark as Asset. It'll now appear in the Asset Browser under Unmark. Do this with all your assets. The second way is to press object at the top left of your screen and select asset and then mark as asset. If you can't see any items in your asset browser, make sure that it's selected on current file and not anything else. Then go to your materials and it's pretty much the same thing. So go to the materials tab, right click on each material and select mark as asset. Then in your asset browser, assign them to different folders, whether it's based off textures and assets or actual categories. Now for the final step, save and close this Blender project file. Create a new project file and go to edit, preferences, file paths and open the Asset Libraries dropdown. Choose the Asset Path and rename the Name section. You can now add as many Asset Libraries as you want, so as many different files and subfolders that you've saved into your computer. In Blender, the Asset Library will only show up with anything that you've actually saved and organized from your previous files, whether that's materials or assets. It won't actually allow you to just drag FBX files or OBJs or material files into that Asset Library folder that you've got on your documents, Unfortunately, that's not available yet as it is in other softwares, but hopefully that comes in a later version. At the moment, the only way to actually set up your asset browser is to do it through a separate Blender file and then everything will just automatically be saved along. So now whenever you wanna open a new Blender file and do a new project, you can just open up the asset browser, select the name library that you've made before, and you can just drag in as many assets and materials that you want. All you've got to do is just select the asset and drag it into your scene and it will automatically snap to where it wants to go. I recommend just leaving it on a append reuse data if you're not actually going to be editing any of the assets because this just uses one copy of the asset itself instead of each time you drag it in, it creating a new version. If you do want to make any edits to these assets when you drag them into your scene, make sure it's on append without the reuse data at the end. So then when you go to edit the asset, it doesn't edit every single one of the assets in your scene. There is a third option called link which means that just if you edit this version, it will also edit the original version of the Blender file that you have saved on your computer. And that's it, you're done. You just created an asset library or content browser in Blender 3.0. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I have a few videos lined up for the rest of December on Blender, Unreal Engine, some virtual production stuff, and a bit on Unity. Um, so if you wanna see those, please consider subscribing to see those videos when they come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.